Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn of CBS Affiliate, KPIX TV in San Francisco, and well-known sports per radio personality, Bruce McGowan. And let's see. Let's get right into this. Here's a question for you guys. Go. When a, uh, we're talking baseball for a minute here. We'll talk baseball for a couple questions here. When a reliever comes in and gives up a run, so, again, you got your starter, and after a while, you know, there's, let's say, a guy on second. Shouldn't each pitcher be charged with a half a run? Let's say the, guy, the next guy comes up and uh, the reliever gives up uh, a base hit and, uh, and the run, the run scores. scores. Yeah. Now, that run is charged to the original pitcher. That's right, the pitcher of record who put him on. Okay. Right. But since it only ta it takes two hits to get a guy in, doesn't it seem fair that maybe they should have, like, each one gets charged with a, a half a run? Because theoretically, the starting pitcher might have been able to strike out, strike out the next guy. Probably, but it would, it would create all sorts of problems with trying to figure out an ERA. Have ERAs of half and three yeah. quarters and so on. But, but two right. halves make a whole. Yeah, yeah so, true. I, I don't like the idea. I mean, I, well, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I appreciate the thinking and thought yeah. process, but I, I think it, it, it may open a can of worms. Yeah. I mean, guys, let's just face it, baseball is just so statistical across the board. Well, we got another one now. Oh, it's <laughs> That's, a, it. That's oh. an interesting idea, though. I've, half I've a point. That. I've heard that talked about, though. Okay, I got to bring blame my brother because he when we were at the San Rafael Pacific, he doesn't he, like that. Huh? He, no, he was the one who brought that up. He doesn't like the, the starting pitcher getting charged. Okay, correct. Right? Yeah, well, you know, there's a certain yeah. amount of truth to that. I mean, there's the old saying. But his fault. He put him on. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I mean, yeah. put me in as a relief pitcher, yeah. and, 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 and all three runs will yeah, score. Yeah, the, the best relief pitchers are the guys that uh, you know the inherited runners don't score. So you inherit 20 runners and maybe 19 score eight or don't score. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny because some some of these relievers, you know, they, they have a record like yeah, they have a huge winning record. I'm like, no, 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 you don't necessarily want a winning record. Yeah. You want a low ERA. Yeah, that's that's, that's the right. important thing. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to this another baseball question. Again, this I got to blame my brother for this one too. Managers should be able to challenge a play similar to football, like maybe some kind of penalty if they're wrong. You know, um, I don't know, record another out or something along those lines, which is interesting because I'm just reading. Uh, about Joe Torrey saying that, um, okay, they're talking about more instant replays for umpires next year, and he's confident that it'll be in 2014. So it says here, uh, video re review has been in place for home run calls since August 2008, and Bud League initially wanted uh, to add trap plays and fair or foul calls down the line for 2013, but uh, the change was put off uh, while more radical options were examined. But you know, as we've talked about before, get the play right. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a good idea. I mean, I've trapped plays and balls down the line, yeah. But, I mean, uh, challenging the umpires, I don't know if that's such a good idea. I well, think that would create all sorts of a tempest in a teapot. I think nothing will get done in that regard until there's a game or a situation where you know, some team or some somehow it's so heavily impacted by what happened that they just got to do but something. Look what happened when the A's lost the game with the home run. That was clearly, everybody saw it, but the, the head umpire. And then later they admitted they made a mistake. Yeah. 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 No, that's not far. Sorry, I mean, what if, what if you're a team that's on the outside looking in, and that game cost you? Well, don't they have, and they have protests, right? Yeah. I mean, guys protest for all kinds Never of reasons. Never does anything. anything no. Just falls on, yeah, yeah, it just falls on. Yeah. 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 But I thought it was kind of funny. It said, the last part here, it says, an agreement would be needed with the unions and players and umpires. Yeah. Why? I mean, we're not. What's such a big deal about it? We're not uh, umpires salaries. are umpires are real touchy about this. I've talked to uh, talked to Eddie Montague, who's the director of umpires here in the West Coast, and he says umpires are really upset about even home run replays. They don't like that. He likes it. He says today's umpires don't like it. Oh, do they have a little too much ego? That's yes. The, well, that's that's, that's a lot of because you know when when they're out there. They're the law. Yeah, they're the final arbitrator. You well, know? And it's harder to be statistically to become an umpire than it is to be a major league player. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, as soon as they get their jobs, unless they really screw up, they're there for life. Yeah. Those guys have those jobs for 30 years, some of them. Like uh, Supreme Court justices. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's right. right. Unless they really screw up. Or, like, uh, who, come on, who was the guy for basketball who got caught with the gambling? And the oh, game? yeah. Oh. I, remember, I, I remember hearing that story. Dunning? Yeah. Yeah, the, the Irish name. Yeah, yeah. yeah so he, he got kind Donahue, of, he, I think Donahue, yeah, yeah, he got he got nailed. He wasn't even a very good umpire or, or official. I official. Guess I, yeah. Think about the think about the guy that uh, that 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 cost that Tigers pitcher a perfect game. Oh, oh, he's got yeah. he's got to live with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what was great about that was that uh, Galarraga, the Tigers pitcher, was so magnanimous. He goes, "Hey, everybody can make a mistake." He didn't even get upset about it. He was so cool. Yeah, because not only did it cost him the perfect game, but it also cost him, in addition, the 
no hitter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and he still won the game. He though. still won the game, but, uh, but he probably got more famous because of it. Everybody remembers Galarraga now. Nobody remember him. He's out of baseball now. The guys, I think he's out of baseball. He's a forgotten character. Who's, who remembers him? What happened to him? He's just washed out. He's not he's very forgotten. good. Not very good. Wow. Okay, so he has. He to, sucked. He no, I'm, I shouldn't say that. He, 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 was, he was good enough to pitch a perfect game. He didn't suck. Yeah. Speaking of no hitters, Tim yeah. Lincecum. Oh, man, wasn't that something? Is, that, is, is now the time to deal him? What do you, what, that's yeah. the question. Hey. That's the question. Hey. Should you steal him now while his, while his uh, market uh, value is high? I, I think he, they or just keep him in the bullpen well, like they did during the uh, playoffs. What are you going to get for him, though? Prospects? Is that going to be a good thing? Or are you going to get a, a hitter? Is that going to be a good thing? Well, I don't know. a number of good years ahead of him. Just something he's got he's got plenty. Him. You know what you do with him? You turn him into, he's like a Greg Max right now. Greg Max was a power pitcher early in his career. Yeah. He had to adjust to becoming a finesse pitcher. And I think Timmy can do the same thing. I'd say hang on to him. Give him three years and $45 million. And if he doesn't, Holy he's so, Whoa, yeah. Brian, <laughs> Jay, Brian Saber, did you hear that? Hey, he's got the money. The Giants are bringing yeah. so lot of crowds. they got Giants Enterprise. they got plenty of They're flush with cash. Give him $15 million. Guys like him don't grow on trees. He's got a live arm. He'll pitch till he's 40. Maybe not 40, but I mean, if he's, if he's a Greg Maddox, he can pitch until he's 40. And who's to say he can't be? How old is he? Like 20, 29. 29? Yeah. yeah. I mean, 10 years. That, that's, yeah. that's he's a, he's a smart pitcher. He never gets hurt. Never gets hurt. That's why they call him 148 pitch. Who does that? Nobody. Yeah. Fernando used to. Wow. Fernando Valenzuela. Yeah, and yeah. doesn't ice down? That doesn't ice down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He is a freak. <laughs> he celebrated by having a cold drink and watching TV with his girlfriend. That's what he did. <laughs> That's how he celebrated. So, uh, good old Hunter Pence. Did, but he did the old Gregor Blanco. Yeah. Right? Oh, with the guy with the catch. Yeah. 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 I like Hunter Pence. He's a character. He's he's a piece of work. Have you ever talked to him, Bert? Hunter Pence? Yeah. Yeah, nice but guy. But he kind of, he, he looks like a tall, slim, fit Marty Feldman. A little bit. <laughs> 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 and, and I just know, it. You, you just he's got That's that funny. look. And For those that it. don't know about Marty Feldman, he had the, the actor, the character actor from the 60s with the big eyes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and, I, I just, and, and, yeah. and it, it, he's got the attention span of a gnat. Oh, does he really? Oh, yeah. That. Well, I mean, when you just, we, and, and when you talk to him and Q&A in his locker, he's like, what? Eh? Huh? 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 Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's just, he de you, well, can, you, know when he was, you know when he was a kid. You know when he was a kid. He was, he was ADHD. ADHD. Yeah. Oh, you can, oh just, yeah. You can tell just the way he bats, the way he stands up there and moves yeah. around all the time. But he just, but you know, great player. Loves oh, yeah. the game, man. Loved he kind of reminds me of Eric Burns, a better version of Eric Burns. I mean, he was hyperactive. Eric Burns was crazy. You ever see time Eric Burns, a fan, ran onto the field, stole the baseball, and mm -hmm. tried to go over the fence, and Eric pulled it back onto the play? There you go. And, and that really upset Billy Bean. That was kind of like the final. They were getting ready to. To trade him, and that was the sort of the, the well, crowning blow. Why? They're afraid he's going to get hurt. They thought he was going to get hurt the person, I guess. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Let's, you know, come on. Let's all put our dresses on. Speaking of know. Eric Burns being yeah. a former Oakland A, how yeah. about Yoenis Cespedes this oh, week? Oh, man. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah, he breaks the window of the of the car. He was going to be, I guess, awarded, but they gave him another car. <laughs> well, why did they give a truck to a guy who's playing in the major leagues who's making, what, Ten million a year because it's get... Chevy. Yeah, oh. yeah. And it's, it's cool Chevy. Vehicle. It's presence, yeah. man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's cool. like a big. It's like getting. It's like you or me getting a big toy, isn't it? You know, somebody just saying, "Hey, Vernon, would you like a, a toy truck or something?" Well, sure. These guys could get Corvettes, right? Well, I just think for, for 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 the for the best team nobody knows, the Oakland A's in that venue in New York. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, I, think, I think it was. I think it was just great. absolutely great yeah, for them to win the home run derby. And the last thing about the hundred pants, how many guys can hit a baseball three times with one bat? Right? That's true. That was yeah, cool. That okay. was cool. Okay, guys, we're going to cut to our first commercial break here. And again, uh, the theme is Ricky Henderson. We all remember him. Ricky. Okay. Ricky Bradley. Ricky. Ricky. I talked about seven in the third person. Ricky. 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 First three callers with the correct answer win a free three day, two night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Their website is lighthouseforfun.com. Call 888 660 4495 to answer this question. Ricky Henderson played for nine different teams, but he only won a World Series with two. Which two teams? Again, 888 660 4495. Good question. I got a few of them here. Okay, make sure to include your name, your email address, speak slowly, and spell out your email one letter at a time. Don't touch that dial. We're going to be getting into some. Very interesting things here, and I got a special question for the boys here. Ooh, uh, goody. Kind of fun. Right. Yeah, don't touch that dial because Sports Econ 101 will be right back. Hey, why is it called the Lighthouse Restaurant or Lighthouse Resort if it's on the Delta, not on the coast? <clears throat> uh, it's just the Lighthouse Resort, Restaurant, and Marina. Okay. Is that a pretty nice place? Well, I mean, it's it's more it's like more of like a campground, 
but it's got chalets, oh. uh, a lot of great fishing. Would you, would you, have you been up there? I own it. You, you own, own it? it? Yeah, it's, 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 don't tell the listeners. Really? That's how, I can, how do you think I can give them all these oh. vacations? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I should I say I never realized you were a resort owner. Well, I foreclosed on it. Oh. <laughs> no. We spent oh. a, a $5.5 million dollars back in 2004. They paid like clockwork till 2008. Oh. And they go, hey, this is a great thing. Why don't we go out and, uh, you know, and then do like a hunting lodge in Idaho? So they kind of stopped paying attention. And then, you know, the market kind of, yeah. and then they couldn't pay us. And high interest rate and all that. So we foreclosed. So we took it over in 2009. What's that area like? Because my wife was interested in maybe going up there sometime. Um, it's it's very relaxing. Um, it's, it's kind of rural. It's good for well, kids. Oh, a lot of fantastic for kids. Pretty pretty mini golf, you know, and then swimming. And you know, we have a pool. We've got basketball. What's the food? The food okay? You know what? The, they, we have a new restaurant operator. Uh, we leased the restaurant out, mm -hmm. and uh, I went up there for Fourth of July. About an hour drive, right? Uh, about from here, from here, hour it's an hour and fifteen minutes. That's not bad. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's right off of Highway Twelve. Okay. Um, but the food actually was very good. I was very pleased that our new operator took the food. Was good. it uh, is is it good for a few days, or would you want to spend five days there? Is it um, personally, I, I I wouldn't want to couple spend days, five days. Yeah, because like it's just a couple days. It's yeah. so much relaxed. It's like camping. When you go up yeah. camping, yeah. you know what do you like to do? Right. So you stay like in a, it's sort of like cabins. The cabins. Uh, people stay in tents. They bring yeah. RVs. Um, and the chalets are pretty nice. If you go on the website, you can we have pictures. Of it. And that little Best card you gave us—that we could use that for that. Minute. Oh yeah, I got. I lost the information about what to do with that card. I got the card, but which card? You, the the wait, little card. I, that, I have two cards. The, the the first one with the. God, I forget it. What? The first. Uh, oh, the one the, the one I gave you the dining deal. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, that's yeah, the first. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah I got the. Yeah, I got the. I got the. I because I, I haven't used. Yeah. I've only used. I, I I've just gone to um, sailors once. Yeah, did you did you go to Tamil Fosh once? Oh, actually, we've gone to. Um, oh, there's there a go. Mexican restaurant in San Isidro we go to all the time, and we get a discount there. Called the Rue Pueblo. Oh like, yeah. Yeah, you, you buy thirty dollars. Using that? Uh, no, they. You know, you what you do is you go online and they and you print these little uh, certificates and you get thirty dollars worth of food. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I can you send that link to me again, Edward, when you have a chance because I lost it. I all my the lighthouse one. Well, not the lighthouse, but just what the little oh, the car. Oh, the Pacific. The Pacific. Yeah, what it's the, good the for. Pacific how to, trade. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll remind you. Okay. Not that big a deal. I just lost all my. I usually save important emails and then it somehow got lost. It occurred to me. And mom's 90th birthday today. My sister's going to rehab. That's crazy today. Wow. Oh, that's a little busy. Well, I, I said to my sister, why don't you go to rehab tomorrow so you can come to mama's birthday? She goes, I don't want to see mom. Oh, <laughs> she, oh. Okay, great. And neither does my brother-in-law, neither does my, my niece. They don't want to see my mom on her 90th birthday. And, you know, so my yeah. wife and I and my sister and my daughter will go over. That's really nice. Your wife. I mean, does your wife get along with her? Or is oh yeah, my mom. My mom is very difficult to understand and, and deal with. My sister right now and yeah. is having a very tough time with my mom. And but that's really cool of your wife. My yeah. wife is very magnanimous. She's, she but if, if, like if, if my mom got out of line, my my wife would put her in her place like that. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she yeah, doesn't she let her put up with crap. Yeah, she doesn't put up with any crap at all. But she's a real sweetheart. You know, she's like. Which is like Vern's wife, you know, or your wife, just real straightforward, no BS. Mm. Yeah, my you know. wife, yeah, I think both yeah. wives are like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's yeah. what you want to have in a, in a partner. Yep. You don't have time for all the nonsense. That is, that is true. Okay. Well, yeah, we come up with some good stuff here. Good, you had it. It's my walk, I steal second, I'm going to put it in the sacrifice. Oh, God, God jeez, so many ripper <laughs> stories. <laughs> he told me that story once he got Ricky Rally. So oh, I asked myself, what is a Ricky time. Rally? And he goes, I'll tell you what Ricky Rally is. That's when I walk, I, I steal second. A sacrifice plan that's going around there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you do that again? Hold on, hold on. We're going to get into that. <laughs> okay, there we go. I love Ricky Rock. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn and Bruce McGowan. When we cut to the first commercial break, we ask this trivia question, and again, the theme is Ricky Henderson. Ricky played for nine different teams, but he only won a World Series with two. Which two teams? 1989. A's yes. and 1993 Toronto Blue Jays. Very good. Well, you know why I know that. It was right not, on that. Not, not 92, because 92, he was still with the A's. Right. And I remember talking to Ricky. I said, you know, we've heard all these stories about the Ricky Rally. What exactly is Ricky Rally? He kind of lit up, and his face sort of in a big, wide grin. And he said, let me tell you about Ricky Rally. Ricky Rally is when I walk. 
I steal second, I go to third wild fish and I score the sacrifice fly. That's very well. And that's Ricky, I'm telling you, he's just like that. <laughs> With the he laugh. Oh, he, he's got the laugh. And he talked about himself in the third yeah. person yeah. all but the But you time. know, Ricky was a sweetheart. He was a, he Great was a guy. genuinely nice guy. He would look you in the eye and shake your hand and say, hey, want to talk to you? Come on up here. <laughs> when he was with the Padres, they were getting on the team bus, leaving the game, and and uh, Rick was one of the last guys on the bus. And uh, one of the younger teammates said, "Oh, hey, Ricky, here, here, here's here's my seat. You got tenure." And Ricky looked at him and went, "Tenure? Ricky got got tenure." <laughs> <laughs> I, I do remember sitting, I was sitting in these um, luxury seats one time. My my sister didn't know the hospital was or something, so uh, I think it was at um, Sandy Alderson. Right. Was kind of in charge. General manager. General manager. Yeah. yeah. So there is a guy on third base, and it's, you know, game zero zero. It's like the eighth inning, and uh, we're just fly ball to left field. And it's one of those plays where it's a foul ball, and, uh, you know, I guess a, a left fielder is always trying to get the ball and not thinking of, gee, if I catch this ball and there's only one out, the guy might tag up in third. Well, go, Ricky goes, and, and all of us who are watching it are thinking, Right away, there's no way you're going to be able to catch the ball in foul territory where you're going to catch it and throw this guy out to let it go. But and, and, you could, and I looked over at Sandy Alderson and he was thinking the same thing. Sure enough, Ricky catches the ball and there's he does it's not even close. He's not I mean, the guy scores and Sandy Alderson just takes this chair and just throws it across the room. Wow, wow. Yeah. Like, Ricky did that, huh? Oh, you know, if it, was, if it was Ricky on third and they tried to do that, they never would have caught him. That's for sure. Well, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, but no, he was, he was, he was in the outfield that time. I remember when Ricky joined the A's in 89. That, that was a great team that just became a fantastic team. That one year, that was, you know, they smoked the Giants in four straight in the earthquake series. I, I don't think I've been around a team that did in the Bay Area ever. The, the best team, I'd say, ever in the history of the Bay Area. Yeah, they just knew coming out of the yeah. spring trip, they knew they were yeah. going to win the whole thing. They yeah. just well, knew well, it. Look what happened. I mean, they came out of 88. Yeah. Yep. Know, Losing Dodgers, to the Dodgers, right? Yeah. And then they, then they lost four straight to Cincinnati yeah. in '90. So I mean, yeah, they had a pretty good team. To interesting thing about interesting thing about that team, though. Jose Canseco missed half the season with the uh, the hand injury, but Ricky was on that team, and that was it was best year. Mm-hmm. Ricky was amazing. Yeah, there's kind of a reason why he broke Lou Brock's yeah. record. Yeah. Yeah. The guy was the, yeah. He quite yeah. Tony Russo says, "Hey, great greatest leadoff hitter of all." Oh, time. No, no, question. Question. no question. No question. No question. Okay. Uh, all right. I'm going to come up with. I'm going to give you the guys a surprise question here. All right, go. Because the first one's easy, and the, the second one's. A, I think. I think a little. Oh, it's a two-parter. Well, oh. sort of. Okay. Okay. The NBA logo. Who is that? That's Jerry, Jerry West. West. Jerry West. Okay, that's right. an easy one. Okay. Who was the? Who is the MLB logo? Ooh. It looks like a cartoon, but I think it's, it's Ted it's, Williams. No. The MLB logo. Okay, because you can imagine, you, you think you know what it looks like, right? Yeah, the little picture. Is it Ted Williams? No, it's not Ted Williams. Mickey Mantle? No. And if I, if Jackie I, Robinson? No, he's, uh, not, he's not well known as that, but you'll definitely know the player. He's, uh, a, he's a well-known player. Yeah. Hall of Famer. Yeah, uh, I think I'm pretty what, what, sure. What era? Uh, the 60s and the 70s. No, but you're kind of getting close. Frank Robinson? No. Okay, you know what? We're, we'll take all day with give this. Us the initi- give Come us, on. Give okay, us the initials. Give us the initials. HK. Okay. Harmon Killer. Harmon Killer. Harmon Killer. Wow. And if you think wow. about it, you remember Harmon Killer, how he batted. Yeah. You look at the silhouette, you go, okay, now it makes sense. You know, Harmon Killer actually was an A's announcer on television for one year. Oh, really? Yeah. Way back in the early 80s. Yeah. 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 Ye
and then you have to oh a pit, uh, the, yeah, right the fielder's the, obstruction the fielder's right obstruction. then you have the fielder running into the batter right right then what you also have it? offensive interference where you have the runner who goes from first to second and he gets hit with the ball oh right but the batter gets to go first, gets to go first. I thought that was kind of fun that's a big and one obviously an error error fielder, okay fielder's choice and it hits bat hit bats in the area I think Barry said that force play. Barry. Um, like you grab it's a field of choice. Field of so choice. Right. So ba basically, there's there's uh, t the, those are the ten ways. Ten ways. Ten ways. But, but, but eight ways for an actual batter. Because pinch runner, you don't count. <clears throat> so I, th I thought that was just kind of a fun. It sounds like yeah. the name of a, a movie or a song or something. You know, ten ways yeah. to hit the first. <laughs> ten ways to get the first base. Get the first base. Okay. Yeah. So uh, just a little thing. Kind of a about dating it. thing. Yeah, that, that does sound <laughs> like a dating. Ten thing. ways to get the first base. Hey, well, we just started out. <laughs> What is uh, first base anyway? In, in, that's in, ki that's uh, kissing. Kissing. Uh, yeah. Okay, kissing. we won't go any further. We won't go any further. Yeah, this is a family. <laughs> <program>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <let's, laughs> I love that laugh there. there. Right. That's a good laugh. <laughs> that is a great laugh. Been working on it. Yeah. <laughs> How many years now? <laughs> <laughs> At least fifty-one. At least fifty-one. <laughs> that's pretty good. Uh, okay. Uh, Andrew Bynum. Now he missed uh, all of 2012-2013 yeah. season. Yet he signed for the Cavs for a mere twelve million. Wow! What's wrong with this picture? Well, well, you got well, you got to look at the fine print because it's it's heavily incentive laden. Is it? Like, yeah, only yeah. only the first year is guaranteed. A hundred thousand. No, yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> for, you know, first year's guaranteed uh, four or five million, yeah. something like that. But then, but then the a rest trifle, of it, a trifle, trifle, yeah. the, the, the rest of it is 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 heavily incentive. Well, if he reaches the incentives, then he'll reach the value of the contract. Now, what but, what what. what I didn't. I, I didn't look enough to see what kind of incentives. Like if they get to the playoffs, certain certain numbers, certain number, certain, yeah. Yeah, yeah. certain number of games played. If more so, than so six people show up to the game, for the <laughs> Cavs. Well, I mean, they, they got Jared Jack next year and Kyrie Irving. That's a good team. You know, I gotta say, as a um, a warrior um, rooter here, I personally am glad they got rid of Jared Jack. Really? Yeah, really? Oh, I love Jerry Jack. I, was, I, 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 I would have. I would have tried to. I, I, I love that guy. He was a spiritual leader of that team. Well, I, I think I see that side of it. But, I mean, but he, he was the Butch Beard of that team. That Warriors <laughs> traded away Butch Beard in '74, '75, and they won the championship. I think. Ed, I think set. Edward has issues with the dribble. ball handling, yeah. certain shot selections yeah. at, at key moments that would just. Infuriate like any warrior fan, but he did a couple of times in the postseason. He saved but the he, Warriors. Yeah, he was terrific he insurance to have. Oh my God! Yeah, was but, he but now Landry, I uh, think I would have, I would have liked to see. Landry. Landry was a good player, but they they duplicated him with what they got in the uh, free agent. Uh, you know, Diego Dalla. Oh that's a great I, have guy. The, I love him. I had the great pleasure guy. Of, great of, of of sitting him down. I, I I interviewed him on the day that the Warriors. Unveiled him and did the little dog and pony show with the jersey and all that kind of stuff. Very nice guy. Terrific <laughs> guy. And he said all the right things. Especially, I didn't know he was tight with Steph Curry, but apparently he is. They played together on a team in 2010, some all-star team or whatever. And, and, yeah. then, and then he told a funny story about Harrison Barnes. The first time that he met Harrison Barnes, Harrison was still in high school or whatever. And, um, and he was there and... Uh, and, and Barnes didn't know who he was, so who are you? And, and, and Iguodala said, oh, well, I'm an agent. They go, oh, you're an agent? Well, why are you playing with us? Oh, I'm just trying to stay in shape, whatever. <laughs> when he's <laughs> dominating the pickup game. Whatever. That's funny. Yeah. He's, gonna be, he's a good player. He's yeah. gonna be, who else did they get? Because well, they got Speets. Uh, what's the guy's first name? Got another seven-footer. And then they picked up uh, a guy named Douglas. Tony Douglas? Him, I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, don't know too much we'll, about we'll just We'll just see how much PT he gets in the good, summer league. Speets is a good player, though. I mean, yeah. they're still using Curry, and they're kind of building everything around Curry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, th I just wonder about Andrew Bogut, though. Is he going to no, be, you know, I mean, I just don't think he's ever going to be, yeah. But, you know, I, I, even though as popular as Monte Ellis was, I was really glad that they got rid of him when they did. Especially, it's very interesting, and I said, I think I said this once before a few weeks ago. The more tattoos a guy has, <laughs> it seems like the worse he played. How about Chris Anderson? Yeah. <laughs> The Birdman. The Birdman, which uh, signed a small contract. Well, didn't well, I was going to say that Will. Uh, we're going to. I do have something about Chris Birdman Anderson. He definitely is the most colorful of all the tattoos. But back, oh, back to Monte Ellis. You know, he's back in the Western Conference. That's now. with the uh, Mavericks, right? Yeah, yeah. some of the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah. We're going to talk about Chris Birdman in just a, a quick uh, Chris Birdman, Chris Anderson, just a second. The here. Birdman. Gonna, the Birdman, and we're going to cut to our second commercial break here. Now we all know Ricky Henderson started with the A's, but which team did he? 
that's just career. But the first three callers with the correct answer were three, three, and eighteen. They think the light. Yeah, these guys are nodding their heads. A good question. Talk about your major league team. Yeah. yeah, or, yeah oh, okay. Yeah, all right. We, have, we don't count uh, Bush League. Though. Okay. All right. Count the Newark Bears or the. Uh, okay. All right. No, yeah. Coney no, Island. No, no, we yeah. We don't count that. Carnivores. Okay. First three, three callers with the correct answer were three, three, and eighteen. That's the the Lighthouse Resort. Their website is lighthouse the number four fun dot com. Call eight eight eight. 660-4495 to answer this question. We all know Ricky Henderson started with the A's. That's right. 1979. Yeah. Uh, but which, which team did he finish his career with? Again, call 888-660-4495. Make sure to include your name, your email address to be slowly leak. Spell out your email one letter at a time. Don't touch that dial because Sports Econ 101 will be right back. And no looking up on the internet. Oh. <laughs> Oh, God, I've been so lazy today. I have not done anything. My wife and I slept until 9.30 this morning. Was God, what was that home. like? Well, it was great. Days. My daughter was over at the in-laws. We, we, had, over? we uh, had a date night last night. We'll be tired to tonight. Came out of town here, watched it, went and saw that movie about the waves, the big waves. That was wonderful. Yeah. Went out to, yeah, the movie at the Rebel here called, uh, what is it? About these two middle-aged Australian former... Is it, uh, is it an so indie? It's it's an indie, and it's it's narrated by Tony Collette, and it's kind of a documentary. These two guys are like big kids; they're about your age, early fifties, and they're both like you know, big kids. yeah, like they're, they're, they're <laughs> just and they get on these crazy waves, these big waves in Australia, and just have a great day. And the, oh, wow. the photography they is big, amazing. Yeah. They have these cameras mounted on the board, or the guys holding it on the end of a little line, and you see the shot of him going into the wave from behind, as if you're an omniscient oh, observer. Cool. You know, it is so cool. That is really cool. And then they have three D glasses, so you. You get the feeling like oh, they're in there. Oh, you get probably so it's see some twelve fifty though for tickets. Jesus, is that what it is? Yeah, it's twelve fifty. Well, that's because it's a they're all independent films and they're trying to. Eva, Eva, you know. the last two years worked for California Film. She was it's a great, uh, a great little theater yeah, for, the, for the Mill Valley Film Festival. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. she did. Um, uh, I guess she started with a thousand volunteers wow. for the first time, and the second time she was more of like a liaison between the you know the, the, the hoity toity people. And the, the hoity toity. The, I like that expression. Yeah, because they just they 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 just jet them in. They say hi, whatever. Then they they're out of there. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Maybe a no prize. Tony Collette's interesting though. She does a lot of these uh, things for independent filmmakers. She narrates a lot of films. You know that are documentaries. She's I first saw nice her movie. in that Showtime series, The United States of Terra. Oh yeah. And she played. Uh, she, she great actress. Very great actress. Yeah. She she played a woman with uh, four, four maybe five different. Personalities. Oh yeah, I heard just about that. Just personality yeah. syndrome. It's just she. Oh, like she a civil. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it was just it was. Yeah, Who played really the original Sybil? Was it Sally Field that did that? Sybil. Yeah. The, that, the was, uh, that was that uh, was that was Woody Allen's woman. Oh, Diane Keaton. No. Mia Farrow. Uh, Mia Farrow. Yeah. Mia Farrow. That's right. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Former woman, we should say. He's Former been with, woman. He's been with his nanny now for her nanny or for forever, years right? now. Yeah. 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 Her nanny's now like in her forties. She's not a kid anymore. Um, I, I only have a couple more things. Uh, we're just talking about Chris Bergman here and a little bit of Bryce Harper, which I sent you guys. Yeah. And then the last thing was just about Mike Miller and the luxury tax. Oh, okay. Is there anything else you guys wanted to cover? We have thirteen minutes. No, we'll have fun. We'll just oh yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll kick it around, man. Okay. All right. All right. Are you a runner, Rotarian? You know, um, I played the golf tournament. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, the problem is I couldn't find the time to commit to every yeah. single, you know, it just was too hard. And if you don't, you know, you just stand in. I always get Shanghai to the speaking at that group every year. Well, that's kind do you of, do that ever? It's fun. It's it is. Fun, yeah. And I always get a friend of mine who's returning, oh, can you speak? We need a speaker. I said, you must be desperate, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that's different than, like, being, you know, going there every single time. Yeah. Single time. <coughs> Okay. All right. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Land of CBS affiliate KPIX TV in San Francisco and well known sports radio personality Bruce McGowan. When we cut to the second commercial break, we ask this trivia question. We all know Ricky Henderson started with the A's, but which team did he finish his career with? The Boston Red Sox. No. San Diego Padres? No. What? That's he, he, he had 26 more teams to go. No. Texas Rangers? No. 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 Rangers. San Diego Surf Dogs. 
I see out of Mariners. I could have sworn no, it was, you, you, you're sworn. naming teams that he did play for. Uh, he played for the Mariners. That's yes, right. Yes, he did. Yeah. I could have sworn it was the Red Sox. Rockies? No, if the Red Sox were the second to the last team. Oh. He, after that, he played for one year with the Dodgers. Oh, that's, that's right. Gosh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> I forgot about that. Ricky ain't going to be too happy you missed this question. (laughs) I I wonder what Ricky is doing these days. I heard somebody was telling me he was doing some coaching with the A's at spring training or something. Yeah, as as a as kind of a kind of one of those uh, special instructors. Special instructors, he would come in, and I see him from time to time, just randomly. At, really? at the Coliseum, yeah, come just out to for, show up, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, he, he's he's got he lives his in the area. Yeah, he's got well, he's got he's got a home here. He's got a home in San Diego. I mean, the guy. You know, when, I, when I was working at Comcast, I was doing some producing. This is about four years ago when we invited him to come in and do a show, and he didn't show up. And luckily, I had planned on that contingency that Ricky wouldn't show up because he's not the most reliable guy. So I had an entire backup show ready to go. And my boss was so happy. He goes, "Oh, thank God, you were thinking ahead." I said, "Yeah, you know, Ricky." Well, I don't know. Have you ever know. called his cell phone? No. Wow, it's, it's got he's got one of these. Or if I have, I don't remember. I I I am almost tempted to just call him right now and just put put his name <laughs> on the air. What is it? Because because if you if you call it, you think he's answering the phone. He's got one of those. Oh. What's got one of those voice screens? Like, Hi. Oh, that's right. Hi, yes, I do remember that. <laughs> and you start talking. Hey, Ricky man, and, and then he just keeps on. Going, oh man, you got me. Yeah, you know what? Um, if you ever need to do that again, and if Ricky doesn't show up. Do it yourself. You do a very good Ricky Anderson. Go to you, Vern. <laughs> it would have to be t- uh, radio for me because I don't think I look like Ricky, Ricky Anderson. Uh, uh, not, not, not exactly. I had the great fortune of, uh, geez, being a, was I a bat boy for an A's game? I was, I was, for some reason, I was in an A's uniform during a game, and in between innings, I got to warm up Ricky. Really? Wow. Yeah, because, you know, he was in left field. Sure. You know, usually the oh, center field or the right field yeah. would play catch, yeah. and so Ricky has nobody to throw with. Yeah. And so I grabbed the glove, went out there, and, in fact, in fact, in fact when, when Ricky first saw me, he was like, oh. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then he saw, saw playing catch with, with, with Ricky wow, Anderson. What a, great, what a great story. Isn't that something? Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. When he comes to, he said he comes to the games once in a while. Does, where does he sit? And if there's, there's a, there, there's a, there's a luxury box the, where, 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 where all these guys got, yeah, where all these guys just kind of hang out. But I mean, but it's Ricky Anderson, he can go wherever. Well, yeah, I, I mean, never see him in the press box. Oh, no. no, but does he walk in? He doesn't like have. Yeah, you know, I mean, this is kind of a silly. Question. Well, usually he he's have a ticket. He just kind no. of walks into the door. Just walk in. Uh, I'm Ricky. I'm Ricky. Well, well, some somebody knows he's yeah. coming. I yeah. mean, he's he's notified somebody, guest okay. services or something. And all all of the uh, ushers over there have been around forever. Most of them have anyway, and they know everybody by face. It's a, and one thing I love about going to the Coliseum. You see guys over there that have been there for 10, 20, 30 mm-hmm. years. I've seen young people grow up. That are my age now. That are in their sixties. You, you know? know, I call them up to tell them I'm coming. They lock the date gates and tell me the game's canceled. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, remember, we said we get going to get to Chris Birdman Anderson. Uh, okay. So he character. signed for one point seven million to stay with the Heat. That's one year. All. That's yeah, all. That, that's the thing, and he could have commanded three point two million. So we're thinking yeah. what he wants. He a maybe he gets along with the guys great, but he wants another ring. Yeah. What's another ring? He said he wanted another ring, and I think uh, this is one of the this is a great sports econ 101 type thing yeah. because we were getting into the money. Had he signed for the three point three million dollars, yeah, uh-huh. it would it would have pushed the Heat uh, over over the certain level where, where the Heat would have had to have paid a luxury tax. Which brings me right to to Mark Miller was uh, there was a luxury tax decided he, that they couldn't afford him, so he got what they call the what they call the. Exemption? Exemption. The amnesty. The amnesty. So yeah, there's so many weird things in there. Yeah, it's something like they mm-hmm. get to choose yeah. one player to say, well, don't count him in the salary. Right, right. right. Basketball has the strangest rules. Oh, my gosh, there's so many. There's the Larry yeah. Bird rule and the uh, Derrick Rose rule. You know who's really good at maneuvering around all that is Bob Myers, the Warriors general manager. I mean, he was a master. If you think about it, the Warriors were, they got rid of Jefferson, Diedrich, and there was one other guy they got rid of, but they didn't want to, Brandon Rush, and they brought in. Equal and they bring in these other guys, and they're still, you know, in good shape. Yeah, yeah. They are. I, I like Jefferson, but unfortunately, I think he was getting too old. Oh, much too and, old. And Brandon Rush, uh, I mean, that, that one's kind of sad. Yeah. He, I think he had a lot of fun. That's when they got an Check you know, this contract. out. Now that we're on the subject of contracts, check that. I just, I just heard this, thanks to my good friend Damon Bruce. One of the worst contracts in the history of sports, period, was the Bobby Bonilla contract that he had with the New York Mets. Okay, 1999. His skills were yeah. starting to, 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 to fall into decline. It happens with aging ball players. So the 2000 season hits, and instead of the Mets, who could have just 
paid him five point four million just to get rid of him. Just hey, take your five point four. Thank have you a much. great, have a great. Yeah. Thank you very much. You know what the Mets did? They contact Bonilla's agent and and said, "Hey, look, this is what we're going to do. Why don't we pay him? We're gonna we're gonna pay him one point two, almost one point three million dollars a year from the years twenty thirteen to twenty thirty five. Jeez. So so it's, so it's kind of a deferred yeah. contract, I think. Agent said, "Well, right, we'll take it." Yeah. So on on July first of this year, he got his first check for one point three million dollars. Yeah. How great is that? And on top of that, if you get a smaller pay check, you're going to get to pay as much uh, income tax on it. It makes more sense in the long term. Yeah, hey, well, you're the money well, man. Well, you, yeah, you know a little bit more about that. Economics first, taxes yeah. second. That's almost like saying, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to win the lottery because I don't want to pay taxes. Have to pay on that much? Nah, right? No, no, I will win the lottery. Thank you very much. <laughs> Wait a minute. So he would have paid how much? Five million. If five point four million, five point four million, one check, million. gone. Well, okay, but I, okay, so and instead, wait a minute. Okay, so so well, no, here, here, let's think about this for a minute. Back then, interest rates were higher, so they theoretically invest five point four. I'm talking about the Mets now. They take the five point four million, they invest the money somewhere to graduate it high enough so that when 2013, I'm talking 13 years later, mm -hmm. so in theory, they might have been able to. Maybe double it. So now they've saved ten million, and that. But and they're thinking interest rates. Let's say at the time maybe were ten percent. We'll just pay him um, just out of the interest. So it wasn't necessarily completely stupid on the Mets' part if they could invest their money wisely. Well, maybe they did. So maybe that, they that, did. That's that's the big question. And then also from the salary cap standpoint, maybe that comes into play too. You know, could the five million compared to the deferred million? So I don't know all the ins and outs, obviously. But doesn't but right. doesn't Benia come ahead a little? Come out ahead a little bit? I mean, thirteen years later, all of a sudden he's starting to get checks for one point yeah, three but, million. Yeah, but I'll bet for those thirteen years, <laughs> you know, now he was probably rich before he was playing with the Pirates. But right. Before that, I mean, if you think about that, if someone let's say someone came to you right now and said, "Listen, we're going to pay you nothing. Thirteen years later, we're going to start paying you mm -hmm. for the next like twenty some years." Now, obviously, you're in your fifties now, right? Compared to you know. How old was he when he got that contract? Yeah, guy had, had him in his, in his 30s, yeah. so this is 99, 2000. Yeah, no, but he was 37 probably. Yeah. And he had signed he had signed a fat contract to play for the Mets yeah. coming out of Pittsburgh. So It's interesting, uh, getting off of the topic, well, it's kind of a side topic. Kean Bonds, same age. Yeah. Kean Bonds, right at 1999, his skills start to decline. Bonds starts doing the juice. Bonds takes off and just goes wait, wait, crazy. Wait, Barry did the juice? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got the best stuff, man. Victor Conde. Wasn't it Victor Conde got him the stuff? Was it Victor Conde that wait, I, wait, you mean it wasn't just flaxseed oil? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny. And, and what was that bomb that he put on? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, you know, if you look at Flaxseed oil, tiger bomb. Yeah, tiger hey. bomb. There you go. It's hey, look, my hat size What is, what is big? tiger bomb, anyway? What is that? Uh, it's just a name for some, I, yeah. it. It alleviates the pain. And, and don't get it no, wet. No, you rub it in and then it goes like your pores, I suppose. Oh, okay. You get that stuff wet. It's amazing how much it hurts. It Does it happens. really? Yeah. I don't know if it's Tiger Bomb specific, but someone gave me some stuff one time. I put on, and then he reminded me, don't take a shower for a oh. while. But I went to exercise, and as you start to sweat, sure. you go, holy smokes, what's this pain? Wow, really? <laughs> like oh, like, yeah. a like, a, like a burning sensation? Like a burning sensation. Really? Oh, oh, and if you ever go, if you, if you go back to Bonds and old you know Pittsburgh uh, baseball cards, I mean, he looked like a twig. Oh, yeah. Oh, I remember, yeah, I remember yeah, his, he showed up at spring training. His rookie card? Yeah, he yeah. turns sideways. He disappears. Yeah. I remember, I remember going to opening day 1999 in Cincinnati, and I see him in the locker room stripped down to his waist. I go, who is this guy? <laughs> did, the, did he spring a linebacker in from the 49ers or a defensive lineman? He turns around, it's Barry Bonds. He's, he's got this big, big and he was cut. Yeah, and he had this big head, and he goes, how you doing? It's like, who are you? Yeah. you know? Huge head. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, my God. And his personality changed a little bit, too, let me tell you. He was a little different that yeah, year. Yeah, they get a little aggressive, don't they? They do, yeah. yeah. And he's so much smaller now. Oh, my God. He looks I mean, good. I mean, he looks fit. Looks like yeah. he still play. You know what he's doing now? He's riding a uh, bicycle long distances. He does 120, 150 miles. Wow. He's really into that. That's a, it's a, it's a hobby for him. He doesn't you know, do it professionally. He just does it for fun. Now, he can harness that and turn it into a pg e energy. Yeah, there you go. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Okay, uh, Bryce Harper. I don't know if you guys saw this. He was, the, he was the home run derby runner-up. Yeah. He was the runner-up. Yeah. So that's a clown like, question, bro. That's a clown question, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the all-time great what's ones. Up with this, what's up with this haircut? Uh, 
Uh, that's, Jesus. You know, he looks like he looks like one of the dead end kids or something. He's a, he's a character. Well, how old is he? 20, 21. Looks like one of those hoodlums from West Side Story. Oh, there you, you know? go. It looks like he could be in the, the Jets and the Sharks. Yeah. <laughs> the Jets yeah. are in the Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> and it could be in a man. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay, so he tells Davy Johnson, play me or trade me. Tells that to Davy Johnson? Davy Johnson. Davy yeah. Johnson's not somebody you do that with. And so Johnson gives in. And yeah. Harper, he was in an 0 for 18 slump. Maybe he likes Harper. Well, 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 I mean, it can't, it can't be just. Yeah. You, you know, it's not Davy Johnson. No. You know, it's the man behind the yeah. curtain. I mean, there's, yeah. there's, there's, there's higher people up there dictating. But Davy Johnson. Johnson has nothing to lose by telling Bryce Harper to go shove it because he's already managed a team of World Series championship. Does he want to? I guess maybe he wants to keep his job. But he's seventy. What is he? Seventy-two years yeah. old. Yeah. yeah. He's kind of looking a little old. I remember once I asked uh, the Mets PR director when Davy was in his prime years with the Mets. He had this big scar on his neck. I said, you know, to Jay Horowitz, who's a real character. He's PR director of the Mets. I said, Jay, what's, what's the deal with, uh, with uh, Davies and the uh, you know, neck problem there? Not neck problem, the uh, scar. Goes, That's a personal matter. Don't ask a question. That's a personal matter. I said, I just was curious, you know. Well, that was probably all over the internet. Yeah. The yeah. story behind the scar. Yeah, yeah. yeah the story just, behind the scar. Just go up to Davies and ask him. Yeah. No, he was not a. I, I, I don't know if Vernon ever, if he ever had any dealings with David Johnson. He was not somebody you'd want to tarry with. Yeah, I, I ran across him when. Um, when uh, Tom Seaver was trying to make a comeback, oh, yeah. and I was working back east, oh, and uh, and he was and he was pitching for the Tidewater Tides, mm -hmm. and Davy Johnson was there. They, they, all the Mets brass, they were there to kind of scout and see what, you know, see, see if he had anything left. Yeah. And eventually, I, you know, he, the comeback failed. But I remember he, Tom Seaver yeah. in the locker room once when he was with the Reds. He pitched a pretty good game. A bunch of us were standing around, and people were asking him questions very timidly, and, and you know, he'd answer with these monosyllabic. Mm -hmm. Yes. No. Uh huh. They oh, find, like Bryce Harper. Yeah, they finally looked up. They looked out at us. <laughs> have you, you ever interviewed Bryce Harper? No. Same thing. Yeah, it's a good thing you don't have him on the yeah. show. It ain't about a word. Oh, wow. <laughs> feel a lot of dead air, man. Oh my God. Well, Tom Seaver just he answered about five questions with yes or no, and then he finally looked over at us. He goes, "Interview's over." Oh, great. Okay, and with that, we're <laughs> and he's one of the, and he's one of those. I think I've already addressed that. He lives up in the, the Napa Valley. He owns a winery. Bottling wine. Yeah, yeah, bottling wine. Yeah. Okay, we're going to uh, cut to our third and final commercial break. Here's the trivia question. Where does the time go? Where does it go? Yeah, already a break. Too much time. Right, what's our theme? Ricky Anderson. Okay. okay, how many different teams did Ricky play for? 13. Or, or, I'm sorry, I apologize. Okay, yeah. how many different times did Ricky play with the A's? Oh, four times. Oh, okay, four times. Four times. Okay. Uh, I think, first three it? with the correct oh, answer. Was oops, three sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry man. I know, I, I was hoping it wasn't four times. <laughs> we, 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 <laughs> sorry about that. 660 uh, to answer this question. Don't trust us. How many different times? Can we come up with another question? How many times yeah. did Ricky play with the A's? And then you also have to tell me what were the nine teams he played for. Okay? Oh, jeez. And don't touch Ooh. that dial because. Oh, name the nine. That's Ooh. good. That's right. Sports Econ 101 will be right back. Oops. Let's see. Mets and Yankees, Red Sox, Blue Jays, Mariners, Dodgers, A's, Padres. Padres. They played with all the West Coast teams, <laughs> except for the Angels. Red Sox? Red Sox. I got them. I got the Yankees. I got the Mets. I got the Blue Jays. I'm trying to think who else they played for. Man. How many How many? you got? How many you just well, rattle off? Okay, seven? Yankees, Mets, Blue Jays, Red Sox. That's four back east. And four out, five out west: Seattle, Oakland, Dodgers, Padres, Angels. They play with the Angels? I think so. Okay, that's nine. What's that? That's that's my wife. Hey, yeah, where are you, honey? I'm on the air. Is that is that her normal uh, sound that when she calls? It sounds like somebody's snoring. Does okay. she snore? I have been caught that many years. I don't know how to do this. Did she did she snore? Did your wife snore? Um, once in a while. My <laughs> wife told me I snore too much. I have to take these breathing rights. Oh yeah, they work. They work pretty well. They, they work pretty well. But the last night, my wife was snoring, and I said, "Woke her up," and I said, "You're gonna have to have a breathe right because you're snoring right in my ear." That's it. Because I'm not snoring. When she says, I'm not really, snoring. when she's really, really tired. Oh yeah. Bam. And the That's snoring it. begins. Snoring like that. What's really cute is when little saw. when little kids snore. That my daughter is, that snores. That's so adorable. It's really cute. Yeah, it is. It is. My daughter walks in her sleep, talks in her sleep, and climbs into bed with us when she's. It has no, it's no memory of no. Yeah, the walking is wow. like, that gets a little scary. Yeah, well, she climbed into bed with us the other night, and I woke up and I reached over. I thought I was putting my arm around my wife, and I could feel this little head. And went, Where is this little <laughs> Papa? Move over! What are you yeah. doing? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> she I does that. She's very surreptitious. 
Pipe, Pipe brother used to walk in sleep, and, and when we were kids, we shared a bedroom. And so, and I knew he walked in his sleep. So one time, I just happened to wake up, and I, you know, I was ready to turn off the TV. And so I, I, I gently grabbed him. He's five years old. And as he sits down, I'm like, I need to get you out of here. Go ahead. He walked in your sleep. You're not going to get out of bed. And he was pretty hard. So the next day, so in the morning, he calls. He, he wakes up, and he goes, he goes, hey. He goes, I had to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, and someone wouldn't let me. <laughs> someone wouldn't let me. <laughs> That's funny. I thought you were walking in your uh, sleep. <laughs> wow. Uh, I just crack up. Okay, what do you want? We got uh, two minutes and two minutes. 30 no, it's seconds. not 30 seconds. No, oh, days. I know a days. couple of uh, fun thoughts for the day here. Okay. Yeah, actually, they're actually, uh, where are they? They are, yeah, they're, they are, they're just fun thoughts. Actually, in the day the show airs, <laughs> uh, uh, training camp would have opened up for the 49ers. That's right. And uh, the Raiders are later on in the month. Yeah. I mean, it's it's here, baby. It's here, baby. It is here. Why did the 49ers not have a training camp uh, away from Santa Clara? They've been doing that in Santa Clara. Now they've been they've been in Santa Clara for a long. Well, yeah, did, first of all, it's uh, it's how many cheap. teams do that? Do they? And, okay. and, and the site, uh, not that many though. Most of the house okay. The, uh, training camp, don't they? I mean, the Raiders do. A lot of them do. Yeah, maybe the Niners just got tired of traveling around and finding. They were in yeah. Stockton for what about ten years, and they were. In, I remember where they were. In well, we we are up the a hill. That's why I asked you before. I don't know what happened How big is your truck? Like truck. Was you got up, like got and I was in the fishing hole behind it. Yeah. Okay. Very where I saw you. Always used to be so proud of you in that fishing trip. Maybe I. I'll I'll, I'll do some things. Well, it's only we're only. Uh, we walked pistols. When you come up Fair Hills, we're exactly one half mile up. By the time we got to uh, Mary Mariucci was running the team. That's true. And then, Booch, uh, yeah. I remember uh, Skip Bayless. Well, I've had, I mean, we've had people like I, I still, move, you know, whenever I still, whenever I see uh, uh, Bayless now, I say that was a great they, move, they huh? Move they got Dennis Erickson, like great they move. Do, they do. <laughs> he have he laughs. He goes, "Hey, I was just trying to get trying to stir it up. Yeah, trying to stir it up. That's the thing about Skip. He was just well. It's like when people move into a house, they they still do that show on ESPN. Oh yeah, first day, whatever. The move. He's a character. Their furniture. Cowboys go to Thousand Oaks. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where Seattle goes. I think Seattle oh, how long is it there? Seattle was... used to go to Yakima College in the middle of the, in the, middle of the state. Uh, they used to go. Redskins go to Pennsylvania. Where do the Giants I mean, it, go? It's... <laughs> Their Giants are in... Uh, they're, uh, Out on the island? Uh, no, they're upstate. Goes out on the upstate island. It goes to York. Hofstra and then the Jets. Jets go to Hofstra. Jets go to Hofstra. Where do the Patriots go? Well, it's not. There's no stop sign. No, the Patriots should go. Uh, so nice. They should go up to like Maine or Vermont. There, no, there, there, cool. there is just the one. The yes, but where that <coughs> when you do it's... make the turn, there's something uh, dark about so that. So what you do is you just kind of go up just a little gross. tiny bit and then come up, come back down. The Redskins are in my hometown for the are first time ever. But you're from Richmond, Virginia. Oh, Richmond. Are you from Richmond, Virginia? Yeah. So there's. Why do you want to go to Richmond, Virginia? It's a very historical town. There's only How much of Richmond burned at the end of the Civil War? A lot of it. But if you go to the right the a little bit, came in there and pretty much burned it down. Good part of it. Down yeah, down. Yeah. Yeah. It was the capital. But and they did that for, as a reprisal. Capital, capital like a better shoot. Were, were they just uh, <laughs> shelling it, or was it a, a matter of they just burned it for reprisal for, to, you know, because it was okay. the home of the Confederacy? It was, it was, it was, yeah, it was the latter. Yeah. Yeah. The Union soldiers were pretty. Towards the end of the war, they were pretty rough. Well, there's only the one. They went in and just destroyed the hell out of Georgia. As, as yeah. General Sherman said, we're going to make Georgia howl. And yeah, they did. And yeah, they did. They did. Okay, because yeah. we get we That's get where that term bummer, bummer comes from. The bummers. You know, we ever used to say bummer. Mm -hmm. Bummer was a soldier who would, uh, you know, while they were going through no, 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 that's, Georgia that's on their true, march, that's true. And they would, I mean, they would leave the company of their and fellows and they'd, they'd go out and just raid and plunder. Uh, and, you know, pick up chickens or whatever they well, get. Well, to give it, give it a shot, because I, I think you'll know, be able to make it. Somebody's you know, silver like or whatever they can get. But Bummer was a, was a soldier? You know, soldier uh, that, that had left, temporarily left. Thing, and, and Sherman's you know, attitude was, we don't care. That can't he said, that'll, that'll be fine. They'll just deplete the, uh, the people of their resources, which is what we want them to do anyway. We want to, because Sherman's attitude was, we want to make the general population. Send a group of Bummers out to go in. Yeah, because we want to make the general population just, you know, not able to support the uh, the soldiers. Like I said, we, it's, he was the yeah. first general Thanks to do that, that actually okay. practiced that. Say, the way you break the will of the spirit of the, spirit of the, of the other side is to, uh, is to destroy their civilian population. Not, not kill them, but just break them. Just, just, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And Hitler, of course, took that to a whole new level. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry.
<laughs> we were just discussing the art of war. <laughs> wow. It's interesting. Over at the Lighthouse, they have you know, a bunch of crows and stuff. Someone was telling me the best way to get rid of the, crow, the crows is... I like crows. No, but in the morning. Right? Oh, in the morning, yeah. They're not, really, they're really loud. They get loud. They're very smart birds, though. They are. Yeah. And so what ends up happening is the guy says, you get a falcon here. Get a guy with a falcon. Ooh. And what the falcon is trained to do, get this, I, I had a hard time believing this. The falcon is trained to catch a crow uh -huh. and hurt it, but not kill it. Just kind of knock it around. Yeah. So that the crow ends up telling all the other crows, hey, man, let's get out of here. This, <laughs> yeah, this, this bird is like, if he gets you, he can fuck you up. Yes. You better you can stay away from here. I had a friend of mine who had, who had a falcon. When he was a kid, he was like 16, 17. He had this falcon. He trained it. It was called Kira. And he'd send it up, and he'd yeah. come to have it a little bit. Yeah. And Kira slept out on this on this uh, this little tree outside of their house. I, I don't know why he did that. I guess they attached it to him. He felt comfortable. Anyway, one night, um, a couple of raccoons attacked him. And the next day, there were three Attack dead the falcon. falcon. Three dead raccoons and dead Kira. They, they'd all killed each other. Wow. A, wow. Yeah, just Kira had wiped out the raccoons, but they had bit they damage. They had damage, yeah. It was a bloody what? mess. Yeah. Talking about, man, yes. talking about go out, go out swinging. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> those, those raccoons paid a price. <laughs> Which Damn. actually, one of our thoughts of the day kind of was sort of along those lines. <coughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Question, and then we'll uh, ask your questions. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Again, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn and Bruce McGowan. When we cut to the third commercial break, we ask this trivia question. How many different teams did Ricky play with the A's, and which teams were they? How many different times did he play with the A's? Oh, no, uh, uh, God, I, I, I'm reading two different things at once. Okay. okay, how many different times did he play with the A's? Four times. That is correct. Okay, now, uh, name the years. Oh, shoot. Name the years? 1979 <laughs> through 1984. Yes. 1989 through 1992. Uh, 93. 93. Okay, yes. 1990. That six or seven through ninety nine. Close. Okay, 94, 90, 1994 to ninety five. Okay. And then nineteen ninety eight was one year. Okay. okay. That's very good. Now he played for nine teams. We already figured that out. Yeah. So he played for the oh. A's. Yeah. Boston. Who else? Boston. 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 Towards the end. Yankees. San Diego. San Diego. Okay. Padres. Padres. Yankees. Go ahead. Mariners. Mariners. I would think that was one year. Angels. Angels. Yes. Dodgers. Dodgers. We already said that one. Blue Jays. Yes. Blue Jays, what's the last team? Somewhere back east. It's yes. either uh, one, one coast or the other. It, it, wait, 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 wait. Don't, don't, back, don't ask me. Back, back east, and it was a National League team. Phillies, no. 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 Uh, back east. No, oh, Braves, no. 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 Marlins, no. 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 Them, no. Marlins. The no. Mets. The Mets. The Mets. Played for the Mets. Mets. There we go. A little bit. Beat the Mets. Eat the Mets. <laughs> Step right up and read the Mets. That, that, that goes back to the 60s. Right? Early 60s. Yeah, it shows you I'm dating myself here. Dating yourself. Okay. Well, what uh, do you think, guys? Hey, opening day of training camp for the Niners. That, oh, that on this it. day. Okay, uh, hey, we guys, we're going to get to our thoughts for the day because we had to cut out here. Ready? Alan Minter, and I don't know who Alan Minter is. He said, sure, there have been a lot of injuries and deaths in boxing, but none of them serious. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, God. a true story label on iron says, do not iron clothes on body. And shoot, I was hoping to save a little time with that one. <laughs> okay, tune in next week to Sports Econ 101. We're going to be discussing sports topics from a business perspective, and we're going to be giving away more vacations for answering sports trivia questions. And definitely check out our sponsor, iraservices.com. All right, thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm your host, Edward Brown. That's a wrap. Well, that's a wrap. That we'll see you next week. All right. Ricky. Ricky, 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 Ricky,